gosh. This man has won Monday already. This is Sports Center. Hey, I'm Julie Tashiri, filling in for Marissa Roberto. And you know, we've officially entered hockey season when we're asking ourselves, is it time for the Leafs to panic? And the season isn't even a month old yet. Following the loss to Buffalo on Saturday, the Leafs are now winless in four straight. And a team that's supposed to be an offensive juggernaut is scoring just over two a game in that stretch. And tonight, they welcome in the rival Lightning to town. A team that the Leafs actually kind of own of late, as Toronto's won six of their last eight against Tampa, going back to last year's playoffs. It's weird to even say that out loud, because for so long it was the other way around, but yeah, I guess if we reflect on it, it really has been the Leafs with Tampa's number lately. And now that we have an 11 game sample size of the season, is it okay to start questioning some of Toronto's offseason moves? Let's take a look at the big four additions. And yeah, those numbers are not pretty. And while of course numbers don't always tell the whole story, what's the point of all that grit if you're still gonna let teams bully you? Prime example, Ryan Reeves already talked about it, but then he was complaining about like the Leafs not having the last change and that was deterring him from being tough. I don't know, it just feels like a cop out. <laughs> For the third time in this young season, it's the Canucks and the Oilers tonight. And who could have imagined the very different position these teams are in, but 11 games into the season. Both teams open the season with a home and home that the Canucks absolutely dominated, outscoring Edmonton 12 to four over those two games. That series pretty much set the Oilers and the Canucks on their respective paths for the season so far, as the Canucks have not really slowed down. They're 8-2-1 and, and currently riding a three-game win streak. And Elias Pettersson, JT Miller, and Quinn Hughes are all in the top 10 of league scoring. They're averaging 4.36 goals a game. Yep, that's best in the league. And they're allowing the second least with just two a game. Now the Oilers, on the other hand, haven't really bounced back from their rocky start to the season. The only team they're ahead of in their own division is the historically bad Sharks. Might be like one of the worst teams we've ever seen. And Edmonton hobbles into tonight's game having lost six of their last seven. So yeah, they need a win. And they need everyone to get going. It goes without saying, but especially 29 and 97. Leon Dreisaitl's in the midst of a seven game goalless drought. Well, McDavid hasn't scored in five. When does that ever happen? And it's not just the big guns that aren't firing. As their bottom six has combined for just two goals and two measly assists all season long. You combine that with a league low, yes, worse than San Jose, 867 save percentage, and it's a recipe for disaster. The Oilers start a three game road swing tonight, and they badly need to turn things around before the season is too late to save. It's hard to picture Vancouver losing a game right now with the way they're rolling. Edmonton's just in such a downward spiral, I wouldn't be surprised to see them drop another one tonight. <laughs> to the NFL now, and after a wild weekend that had four marquee AFC teams all playing each other, we thought we'd have a definitive answer on who the best team in the AFC is. And the answer to that question appears to be in the North. Cause it's either Baltimore or Cincy. Let's start with the Ravens. They absolutely decimated Seattle and are tied with the Chiefs at seven and two for the best record in the conference. And they have the league's best point differential by a mile. Now, if you're not watching the games and just looking at the box scores, you wouldn't realize just how special Lamar Jackson's season has been as he looks like a legit MVP candidate. And FanDuel currently has him sitting at five to one. But the Bengals also have an argument as the best team in the conference as they look very different with a healthy Joe Burrow. And the numbers really reflect that. Yeah, looking at these, I think it's safe to say that the calf injury played a major part in the Bengals first month. One thing for sure from Sunday though, it was a rough one for the AFC East. Let's start with the Bills who seem to be in real jeopardy of not making the playoffs as they're pretty close to even on both sides on FanDuel. But it's the upcoming schedule that could be problematic for Buffalo, especially that three game stretch with the Eagles, Chiefs and Cowboys. As for the Dolphins, well, it's a fair question to ask. Are they a bit fraudulent? Sure, they're beating up on the dregs of the NFL, but anytime they play a team with a winning record, they fall apart, losing by an average of 16.3 in those games. And then there's the Chiefs, who at seven and two have a claim to be the best, but it just hasn't looked right for them offensively all year. Week nine concludes tonight on TSN with Monday Night Football. You could watch the Jets and Chargers at 8.15 Eastern, 5.15 Pacific. <laughs> to the association now, and for the first time this season, James Harden, he's gonna be playing basketball tonight. And so far, his time in LA has already had an interesting highlight before even hitting the court. I'm not a system player, I am a system. Yeah, that's the most on-brand thing you'll hear today. It's hard to even be surprised by this, but yeah, he's a great soundbite, and he's kind of right. As long as that system is only built around the regular season and completely ignores playoff success. 
And yeah, that's kind of harsh, but also kind of true. On paper, this lineup looks deadly and features some massive star power as they're the fifth team in NBA history with four players who entered the season with five career all NBA selections. But that could also present a lot of questions. Like who's gonna have the ball on a team full of guys who want the ball? But the big plus here is what Harden could create for those superstar teammates, as the beard was doubled on 18.6 possessions per game last season. That was the second most in the entire NBA, behind only Luka Doncic. So if something like that happens again, that's a lot of open shots for those other three superstars. That's all for today. I'll see you right back here tomorrow at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific.